Hello, and welcome once again to Off The Mark. Uh, this is episode four after a long hiatus uh, for the Thanksgiving weekend. We hope all of you had a wonderful weekend. I know I did. I had a wonderful time uh, cooking a ham and then eating it. So it was wonderful. It was awesome. Um, I'm your host, Tudi O, and with me is my co-host, Miss Meeks Kali. Ma'am, how was your weekend? Hi, Miss Tudi. Uh, we had a wonderful holiday, very festive. Um, my particular party was only six people, so we didn't get to be defiant in any way um, <laughs> of our own accord, but it was still lovely. And yeah, it's been an interesting, an interesting holiday and time to celebrate. Sweet. We had about 14 How was yours? At, and my Thanksgiving, and it was like, yeah, you know, yeah. 20, we did it. American. <laughs> Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, Beautiful. we want to thank you guys for joining us once again. Uh, thanks for yeah, uh, thank you. asking. I've had a lot of people asking about when the next episode was going to be. So that was kind of exciting to hear. Um, so again, thank you guys. If this is your first time joining us, um, please do me a favor. If you like what you hear, like, share, and subscribe. If you don't like what you hear, like, share, and subscribe. But, Just the same, please. Those are your options. <laughs> those, are, those are your only options. Thank you. <laughs> this is America. Nothing's going here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so today, uh, really quickly, I wanna, we want to dive into a little bit um, about what's going on here in California as far as the new stay-at-home orders and the lockdowns are concerned, uh, what has happened um, over the Thanksgiving weekend. As Ms. Uh, Kali mentioned, we've, we were only allowed here in California to have six people and under in our households, um, basically single-family homes, uh, which... I mean, that's just unheard of on a Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it, it's you know, it's, it's been interesting. Um, we've had a 10 o'clock curfew from 10 to 5 a.m. for, and it's supposed to last for, for about a month. Right. Um, yeah. It just began uh, on Saturday was our first day this past Saturday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. For, for the 10 o'clock curfew. Um, yeah, the stay-at-home stay orders, I think, went into effect uh, yesterday. Yeah, I think so. I believe yesterday, on Mon Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and today's the uh, the first of December, um, but yeah. So it, it's it's been interesting. On on top of, uh, on on top of that, Newsom's tone deaf uh, reaction to Small Business Saturday kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> I took it personally. <laughs> yeah, you you actually the one who pointed the meme out to me. Yeah. Um, so. This past weekend, of course, is, is tradition. We have Black Friday, where it was more online now and, you know, available all week because, you know, people weren't lining up at the stores in the same way as, tr as is tradition. And then Saturday is generally Small Business Saturday, leading into, um, you know, Cyber Monday. But on Saturday, Gavin Newsom uh, tweeted or on his Facebook, today is Small Business Saturday. California is home to over 4 million small businesses. This holiday season, shop safe and shop local to help support our economy and the over 7 million workers that help keep our small businesses, yada, yada. And of course, a million people like read, or I don't know the exact number, but um, it went viral, of course, with people retweeting it and stuff with such commentary as like, dude, are you drunk tweeting again? Like the businesses are closed. You're the one who closed them, <laughs> you know, and it was such like, an incredible like let them eat cake kind of moment like he could not be more like removed from the state that he's supposedly governing and guiding through a crisis of his temperature check of where you know our his citizens are um not only with small businesses but with thanksgiving as well as he's giving these draconian measures that we're supposed to follow not only um limiting the amount of people that we can have limiting that they can't be from other households so no you know, Friendsgiving and stuff like that, uh, that he himself attended a private dinner indoors um, at a restaurant with, I think there were 16 people at the, at the table, none of them wearing masks, not social distancing, obviously from various households and things. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, at the same time as they were telling, instructing Californians and across the country, as well, not to travel out of town or out of state to visit relatives for the holidays. Um, numerous mayors and governors did so in, in spite of it. Um, a lot of uh, California um, uh, officials and representatives uh, had a meeting or conference or something where they traveled to Hawaii recently at the same time as they're telling all us, 
all of us to stay home. So there's just this incredible divide where not only is the middle class, um, you know, small business owners, which is the lifeblood of not only California, but, you know, the U.S. at large, um, is just being completely like sucked dry, drained dry. And there's just been this division into the upper and lower class. Um, so as we're going back into this lockdown, um, I'll share to you uh, the, that there's been this transfer of wealth as a lot more people are shopping online. Um, so in the midst of all this small business Saturday, uh, small businesses have, 21% uh, of small businesses have closed and revenue for the rest is down 30%. Um, the profits, let's see. Well, I guess in contrast to that though, Amazon profit is up 100%, Walmart profit is up 80%, Target up 80%, Lowe's up 74%, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, and Apple and Google stocks are at a record high. And I believe um, small businesses have lost 200 billion, I think was the wow. number. Um, wow. So $200 billion in like, uh, profits or, or industry, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's just in, insane that, you know, um, as we're going into COVID and I, you know, as Judy, you've mentioned um, that you have a high risk family and or there's members in your family that are at high risk. So we're not saying any of this from the perspective of, you know, we don't believe in COVID and that we're not empathetic to anyone who has lost somebody or has, you know, tested positive or experienced symptoms or has been in any way, um, you know, challenged by this. But uh, Tudy, is there anything that you want to share? What we are saying is that it is not our government responsibility to keep us healthy. Right. It is in no way, shape or form our government's responsibility to keep us healthy. Um, for the last four years, I, I, I do have a high risk daughter. She, she was born with, uh, with heart issues, severe heart issues, um, was on the transplant list and by the grace of God, uh, was removed from the transplant list a few years ago. Um, so we do, we do run, run uh, uh, a tight ship when it comes to the flu season. Now, here's the thing about that. We do wear masks. Uh, I, uh, Ms. Kali has seen me in a mask for the last four years, at least for six months out of the year, simply because with high-risk people in your family, droplets do exist, germs do exist, they are real, and they, they do get passed. Uh, viruses are real, illness is real, disease is real. It is up to us to keep, to keep, to keep our health. Um, it's up to me to make sure my daughter and my sons wash their hands and, and sneeze and cough uh, respectfully. Um, it's also up to us to respect establishments who do have these rules when it comes to the mask wearing and, and things of that nature as opposed to um, being, being disrespectful. If, if wearing a mask or, 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 or just the simple fact that, that I'm healthy and I, I, don't, I shouldn't have to wear one, I 100% agree with that. Me, I'm healthy. And this, in this moment, my daughter's healthy. What we, what we do is we, we continue to, to habitually wash our hands. We eat healthy. We drink plenty of water. We sleep well. We get a lot of vitamin D. And these are just, you know, basic, the, the basic five food groups of life, you know, uh, honestly. And it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that people don't get sick. It doesn't mean that we don't get sick. It, means, it just simply means that it is our responsibility to rehabilitate ourselves. When we put that power into the hands of the government, the government also has the power to make us even more sick. So when we look at the bigger picture and we see things in full view and we, we come full circle and we see them that way, it, it's, it's, it's almost night and day. It's definitely, um, it, it's definitely in my, for me, an, an easy decision to sit here and, and just put a little bit more extra work and a little bit more um, uh, reading and, and, and information. I mean, the CDC has put out that if you're healthy, 49 and under, 99.92% survival rate. 70 and above, 94.6% survival rate. Now these are all, again, these are amongst healthy folks. You know what I mean? So, I mean, uh, underlying issues, including uh, issues like my, my daughter's heart disease do make you what they call it high risk for a reason. They do put you at a higher risk. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that being said, that, that's my only concern here is is with all these lockdowns and with all these mandates and with all these people suffering including um, our children having to have school at home um, 
uh, domestic violence on the rise, suicide on the rise, uh, single because people are, are, are losing their livelihoods every, every second of, of every day that, that we live here under these lockdowns. There's t plenty of people that are losing their businesses. And with that, many families, not just immediate families that, that own those businesses, but many, many people suffer. And that's, that's the bigger picture. That, that's, right. that's the issue here o over, over this idea that our government is keeping us safe. Now, we mentioned in a, in a past episode that after 9-11, things weren't the same. They never went back to right. the normal that we remembered before 9-11. Um, and I do feel that um, COVID is, is a, while very real, is, is a very good excuse for the government to do much the same. And I do believe that after this year, and hopefully once the dust settles on, on getting this virus under control in one way or another, mm -hmm. um, we will not go back to a life that we once knew. And that's one kind of scary, but at the same time, that kind of just makes it more our responsibility to make sure that that doesn't happen. Right. Um, so with that comes information and, and, and a better healthy lifestyle and, and just, just keeping yourself vigilant to everything around you. And again, most, more, more importantly, most importantly, stay respectful. Our children and, and, and our families, they mean everything to us. And some of us have lost, have lost families to COVID. Some of us have lost family members to um, plenty of other diseases and illnesses that, that run rampant in the United States. Right. And this happens to be the only one that we're shutting things down for. And I know for most people that I meet, it's, it's something that just doesn't make any sense. And before an implosion of a revolt and an implosion of frustration, vigilance and, and I think respect is key. And again, keeping things in our own hands as far as our responsibility for our own health. That, that's, that's key for me. Yeah. If, if the government truly was concerned solely about our health, like you were saying, they would make sure or mandate the things that keep you healthy. But we've been operating as if they're is no such thing as an immune system. Like last year there was one and now you're a conspiracy theorist if you think that you have one, right, you know? Right. And yeah, just that, um, you know, if they were concerned sincerely about health, like gyms are being closed down, you know, churches are being closed down, that like your spiritual health, that's a big, you know, component of your overall Absolutely. holistic health. Um, and yet McDonald's, liquor stores, you know, all these kinds of things are staying open. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like we need to use common sense in this and just realize that um, those who um, make the poison sell the cure, <laughs> you know, and just to not be swept in up in it and just realize what truly matters, like he was saying of our family, our friends, our communities, our neighborhoods that, you know, regardless of whatever dictates and mandates and everything that tries to be thrown at us from the top down that like, like our interwoven heart and community is the true country, you know, is, is what's real and that that's what will persist. So if we as a community decide a better way to take care of each other, to protect those that are compromised in some way and, you know, support them with the utmost health giving things, isolating them with a mask in their home is not, does not <laughs> flourish health, you know, in and of itself. So um, if, you know, it's up to us to figure out what the other solution, like you said, is. And if we don't, though, 2020 has been the year where it's been, um, you know, incredibly sobering and blatant that the government will find a solution for us if we don't so choose. So, you know, they say that you discipline yourself or nature will discipline you for it. So, um, yeah, we want to dive into this subject later. We had a nice holiday break. Um, and I guess just in closing, we want to share that as we mentioned, we're filming today on December 1st. And as we transition into the next season, upcoming season, there's a lot of incredible things coming about during December, um, from the dark winter that's been predicted on the political spectrum to astrological, um, astronomical alignments that are once in a lifetime, once in a century, once in everything. So um, it's incredible to just see where we can play in all of this. And so we're hosting our solstice online cleanse uh, where uh, you can just visit us. We'll have the link on our Off The Mark um, cast page in our link tree. And you can just visit that page 
we are accepting any amount of donation because we just want people to participate. But of course, that we are both solo mamas, so anything that you can contribute, you know, and circulate that energy, we are wanting to funnel it back into creating more content and things like this um, that we can help serve our communities and find way to empower those around us. Um, so. You can just visit the page, make any donation, and uh, give us your information, your uh, handle, so that we can invite you to follow the page. And yeah, we're going to be sharing a daily IG live uh, with just different tips of health, eco, and lifestyle tips, um, preparedness, fitness, meditation, just all things that we can do to just really align our heart, body, mind, and soul for whatever's to come you know, and just feeling really centered and empowered and excited about our position and all of that. So um, in closing, Tootie, where can we find you as well? Well, you can find me at Tootie O, oh, my hero. Uh, you can find me anywhere uh, on that um, on that handle. And I, for one, am excited about the cleanse. Um, any and every time I've ever done one with you, I haven't regretted it. Um, my body thanks me because I am brutal to it. It's mad at me half the time, so it's going to be a good month. <laughs> <laughs> she did a lot of work. <laughs> um, it's wonderful. Yeah, so we'll um, have the links for you there so that you can follow along. And yeah, everyone is welcome to join. So, you know, um, we have a suggested donation amount, but anything that you feel willing and able to uh, contribute at this time. We just want you to be along with the journey and have whatever tools and resources would support you in navigating, yeah, these coming these coming weeks, the coming winter. So awesome. Thank you so much. We'll awesome. see you next time. Thanks, guys.